Yeah, so you could, what Mortar Caner is suggesting, that would be the best bet, is go hover over the edge, doing the unweld option, and unwelding those. And then you could basically just, if you hover over the point, you can stitch. You can either go through and just double click to stitch the other ones back, or, you know, depending on the distance of those parts, the geometry modified topology weld points will auto weld everything at a certain distance. So if it's further enough away, with weld distance one, it'll put a, all those edge verts back together, except for the one that you maybe slid or moved. It's louder, okay. Yeah, I gotta turn it down now. How's that? Uh, I'm peeking a little. All right, I turned it down. Let me know if that's good enough. Yeah, but that's a good, um, I forget whose question that was. It's okay, sweet. Talk about ch yeah. So it's a good good point though, being able to unstitch those. I mean, Z Modeler is still pretty new to ZBrush. So as far as making additions and improvements to that, we absolutely are going to be doing that over time. And and we've been making little tweaks, little modifications, say little things here and there. But that would be uh, that's getting into the Maya territory, which we are now uh, with Z Modeler. You now can pretty much just stay, I stay in ZBrush for all my block modeling stuff these days. Is it possible to extrude an edge to get a face in Z modeler? Yeah, so if you want to do, I do these kinds of things where, like if I go back to my character, if you just take a look at the like the shirt that I've got on this guy I got this little sort of beveled edge here and let's see if I've got the I can load up the uh, clothing and character assets yeah if I go back to the shirt like the default shirt I don't think has any extrusions so I've got this edge sitting down the side if you hover grab Z model there hover over that edge we can go to the extrude option and just say you can do edge loop partials if I just do complete what it'll do is it just lips it off the the surface so if I kinda just go in here and grab this you see how it brings that up and it connects those faces and if like this would actually be if you wanted to um, split a point to I'm sorry I keep forgetting your username uh, talk about just question that actually might be a good one if you go to extrude a single edge you could basically go in, extrude this one, so you're basically separating these points, and then hover over the poly, and you could delete, say, delete the poly group. So now you've got this face removed. So then you can actually go back to stitch, bring this one back here, and then now you've got this point, which if you wanted to, you could maybe just go in and like move this thing into place, like hover over that poly, gotta move do whatever you want with that so that would be an easier way but then extruding the whole edge like that's what I did for that shirt when I smooth it out I got this nice little lip instead of having to do a full extrusion to go and stitch all those points which would just be nuts <laughs> Snapshot that guy. Trying to be cognizant of uh, my on screen goodies. I think it, we tend to get more viewership. I think uh, stylized character. I think a lot of people really dig stylized characters. I don't know. How about you guys? What's your preferred type of character to sculpt? I used to. I spent so much time focusing on realism over the years and it's tons of fun and it's such a great challenge and a great skill to have professionally speaking of course especially in the video games world and doing likenesses and that kind of stuff but man it can be very time consuming let's go extrude these guys just a little bit I 
this needs to go just so I'm just sliding this point up there this is a good little trick if you want to just even out verts just doing this the point slide option by brush radius it'll stick to that edge loop but like in this case I just want it to be a little bit more in the middle to smooth out extra detail oh sorry I mean, man the the chat's going crazy I didn't even have it in the right thing what shortcut for Z modeler um, for me it, it's B to open up the brush palette Z for Z modeler and then it actually is the M key so BZM that's how I always I kind of have my like my core brushes are sort of solidified in my brain like BMV is move BST is standard BDS Damien standard PCB clay buildup which if you can remember those key essential ones I always tend to keep those in my wheelhouse and anything else that I need like I end up using a lot of clipping selections masking and that kind of stuff and then if I really need to get a specific brush that's when I go in and I'm like okay what what do I need to you know use for this one scenario but I mean you could just litter those all around your canvas and your custom UI if you wanted to Uh, yes for the menu oh yeah sorry Mortar Caner I think he answered your question correctly uh, the the Z modeler menu is the spacebar when you've got that selected so when you're hovering depending on what you're hovering over by the way so if you want to do point actions you hover over the point and you see you get this space this menu if you hover over the edge this is a separate menu with different actions and targets and then the same for polys which a poly has the most. It has the widest range of features and things. So each one's different, but it's just spacebar. All right, so let's uh, let's wrap this up. Noodling, guys, you guys got to stop me. You can't let me do this. Be like, hey, what are you doing, man? Been working on this piece for like 20 minutes now. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of brute force this uh, cylinder piece. Oh, this is where they, uh, the old mask blur times 10. Boom. So much faster. As Louis Tucci used to say. Learn your hotkeys and wow your friends. <laughs> All right, so let's get in here and let's do a little Boolean action. So I got this sort of trigger loader, which actually what I think I'll do is just going to blur this a tiny bit and let's do a little deformer action maybe do uh, inflate you guys been playing around with these oh, let's uh applied so I think I'm gonna go up oh, not use my own custom menus so I've got Dynamesh in my custom so I press 2 I can go to remesh essentials and I got my Dynamesh in here which 200 let's go up to say 3 Let's do a little. Maybe a little smooth. And that 
direction. Yeah, so this is where those things really get in there. Instead of me going in and masking that off and using the smooth brush or using deformation smoothing, I can just do all that right there. Accept it. trick here if we go this direction let's go smooth you see the smoothing actually follows the direction of the gizmo so if I just if you've got this thing lined up alt clicking on the reset puts it back to regular but then if you hold alt and drag the rotate you can angle that thing and then just go ahead and almost all deformers are going to respect that direction and follow the gizmo so you kind of use that as sort of like your guide still using the transpose tool how many of you uh, ever got everybody here ever get into transpose it's still one of my favorite things to use it's I mean don't get me wrong gizmo is amazing if you've been a long time ZBrush user having the gizmo is a big deal but then just little adjustments and tweaks I just like having this little controller it feels more natural the gizmo is just very CG to me which it's great for moving parts around, but getting into like posing and moving things, I totally prefer using transpose. transparency you just take this part Nearly there, nearly there. Finally got the length going. Jeez. All right, so let's see what I want to do next. Just get a little details going in here before we uh, call this one.
right, so what do we got in there? We got some some bolts, some little mechanical parts and details. Alright, so I'm going to quick save. these parts and components I'm just going to go in here I've got dynamic subdivisions on so I'm going to just apply all these so be lower oh wait what happened there let's go back looks like I before I applied these guys. That mirror and weld kind of screwed this up, so I'm just going to delete these center edge loops. There we go, and then mirror and weld again. Perfect. Oh, sorry, I haven't been checking the chat. Uh, side effects says, I guess the model of the brush has his hotkeys too. <laughs> Nightbot sharing Z Classroom, all right. I love it. Yeah, there's tons of Z model of the tutorials. Um, check it out. If you go to, I believe, Digital Sculpting and Modeling Courses section, there's, there's a unique group of videos for each polygon action, or each Z model action, so points, polys, and edges. Uh, side effects says you were learning Maya for five months now, ready for ZBrushing. All right, yeah, definitely, uh, especially for, I mean, there are sure, sure there may be some things that you may not fully get the capacity to do compared to some of Maya's tools as far as just block modeling, but for the most part, just basic stuff, inserting, edge loops, bridging, closing holes, closing convex, I mean, all these th great things, especially the, if you go to the, uh, like if you hover over a poly, I got these dense polys, the bridging connected polys and two polys. So many really cool things in there. I'm just even go in and grab a cube, make this thing a poly match like these two edges here. If we got a poly bridge connected, it's going to see when you hover over the poly, it gives you a little orange line that points towards the direction of the face normals. So if I grab this and I grab up and down, I can bridge those things or say we go in and delete a hole we can bridge two holes and do say arcs make a little handle and change different types of arc and line is going to be a little different than they basically have different sort of algorithms that bridge those connections and this is super fun not to mention the whole if you haven't used QMesh QMesh is really cool I can hold alt and paint in faces extrude and I can take these ones and QMesh will snap to those polygons and bridge and it remembers those settings so if I do it here it's gonna do the same steps or rather let's say we do like grab four extrude this distance say you need it to be the same if I go grab four anywhere else and just tap now ZBrush remembers each one of these polygons and it'll do it that same distance which is super awesome um, 3PO QE you're asking how blurred times 10 
that that one I was mentioning that earlier. The uh, I basically went in and I made I have tons of macros in my custom UI. So in my macros folder, I've got tons of these different things that I just do a lot of. So for the masking essentials, I have this one where, like, say if you want to make it, if I grab this area when I click that, it blurs it ten times. So let's say if I want to do it again, I can go to macro. I'll do new macro, and ZBrush will ask you if you want to initialize, which will strip everything back down. I'm going to click no, and then now it's recording. So everything you do from now on, it's including everything that you click as far as buttons and actions in ZBrush that are recognized are stored in this macro. So say if I go, I'll mask an area, and then I'll do a, I want to do a mask blur times, say, five, and then I'll inverse it and go five the other way. So I can hold control and do, or you can just go to masking and just do one, two, three, four, five, and then inverse, and then one, two, three, four, five. So it's kind of blurring in both directions. And then when you're done, go to macro, click end, and then I can go in, I keep my custom macros in here, I could do mask adjustments, so whatever you name this is what the button is going to be created for this, so I can do, I'll do mask blur, call this inverse say 5 by 5 trying to think of a good name here. So mask blur inverse 5 by 5 So that's done. And then now all I want to do is if I want that to load into my default macros folder, I can go, let me just go and grab my So I saved it in my personal folder. So I go to mask adjustments and you'll see it's going to create two files. It gives you a text file and a PSD. So if I take both of these copy those and I keep these all stored on a separate drive so then when I go into my ZBrush presets I can go to ZBrush find your root directory so Pixo ZBrush 2018 go to Z startup macros and in here I've just copied and pasted all my folders from the other directory so that I can go let's see we'll do masking adjustments and I'll paste this in here so at the very beginning you'll see there's a zscript file in there for the other ones so that file is going to be created when I load these macros so once I close this I can go into my macros up here and I just click reload macros and you'll see that that now creates a button based on the name of that text so now I can use this I've been taking all these macros and I put these in my custom palette which I've got mapped to the two key so I've got like all my custom macros for mirror and welding and that kind of stuff I've got one for using nano meshes and things like that but I could take this uh, macro button go to preferences config and enable and I can go back here and control alt drag this thing say down here and now if I do that mask click that button it's gonna do it and boom there you go so just think about the kinds of things that you could do think about things that you automate or things that you do repeatedly especially for just simple basic operations um, it's really, really, really handy. Yeah, Transpose is great for 3D printing units, definitely. I love using it for that as well. And definitely, if you haven't gotten into using Scale Master, this is really cool because this will actually update your entire scene and Transpose will be accurately locked to that. You probably do use that, I would imagine doing 3d printing yeah so mortar Kinder shared a uh, uh, macros video which definitely check that out there's tons of really cool things you could do um, oh talk of it talk about uh, emergency question 43 inch monitor and it's 4k resolution you can barely see your ZBrush cursor Oh, I see. So you don't see the red indicator. Is that what's happening? You're just seeing the disk loading icon. Yeah, try Motorkiner's suggestion. Otherwise, 
I'm not sure. It, that would be something you would want to submit to Matthew. You'll get it to Matthew and Will if you submit a ticket, and most likely they'll send it to me, and then I can take a look at it and work with you on that. Um, that particular setup, it's hard to say. I haven't heard of that before. 4K monitors have been showing more issues recently just as far as integration, and ZBrush is configured to work with everything, but there's always some unforeseen things. It could be drivers. It could be... It always ends, a lot of the time it ends up being drivers in some situations or some new tech that isn't adaptable to all applications. Hard to say. But yeah, let me know if Mordekainer's suggestion does anything for you. Oh, geez, sorry, 3.13. Okay, I'm going to run and use the restroom really quick. I'll be back in you can time me 30 seconds. Yeah, I gotta get off this gun. I, you guys, you guys, good. Somebody's checking me on this. I appreciate that. So I'm gonna do a, just a quick little, one more thing. Let's go insert cylinder. take this guy let's do a quick I just set my subtraction I go to merge down so that's going to give you a white poly group and you can dynamesh it or you can do remesh by union which will give you a complete union cut so if I undo that of course I can do what I want to do is if I split hidden for this thing turn on that dynamic preview and apply those So this, the way this operation works is taking, I'm just taking this top piece, I'm going to merge it down on top of this one with this little subtractive icon, which Dynamesh does this. I can show you if I go merge down, for example, and just Dynamesh it with that on, it's going to give you a cut, but it's going to Dynamesh and remesh that. So if I undo it, doing the deformer remesh by union, this is going to actually do a uh, different the lie boolean algorithm which is going to give you that super clean cut line and re-weld those edges so it ends up giving you a a cleaner result if you don't want to deal with dynamishing that thing
let's go grab a grab a bolt. Now for the little quick subtractions, let's go, I'm going to grab this guy, let's insert a cylinder. Now for this little shape up here at the top, I'm going to take this cylinder and just do a little extender. We can accept that and maybe just do it one more time. Oh, I just realized my, I forgot I moved my camera. So I'm gonna do a little bevel of this edge loop here. that edge loop. So I'll turn on my live boolean and let's set that one to subtract. turn on my local symmetry since I have two. I can shrink this down. And we can tell this to go so you kind of see how this lip because it's a cylinder sort of curving at that edge I've got this thing just jamming straight in there. But if I want this to say wrap to the contour of that, I can actually go in here with live boolean and preview, but then I can take this. If you set the gizmo to this, whoops, undo that. So keep this oriented to that angle and I can do a bend arc. And I can actually take this now and bend this thing. So I can sort of bend it a little bit more towards the edge. So you can kind of see this happening. Uh, let me check. Uh, looks like you got a question. Let's see. How to bridge two open sides of the same edge count like a cylinder split? Oh, that might be a former question. Yeah, it's good call on the uh, one side. Let's do that. I'm going to go to full reset. Delete. Delete hidden over there. Let's maybe just accept that. Now, let's 
go. a single edge Still not going all the way through, no way. It's probably too thick, but hey, it's good enough. So make boolean mesh, or I could have done the old remesh by union. All right, I'm gonna take a break from this because I want to get back to sculpting spend way more time on this than I wanted to. I was just fiddling with all this stuff. Okay, where are we at with the old character? So when I left off with this dude, I was using, I was doing some fiber mesh for trying to get this sort of, uh, I don't know, some fur kind of inlay on that jacket. ended up with these sort of like bubbly bubbly inflated fibers you can kind of see it close the holes but I think I can turn this into something here so let's go back and I'm gonna load a new spotlight for maybe doing some posing so I think I'm gonna Dynamesh these. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to do this. I'm using the Dynamesh Deformer instead of just going back to my Dynamesh settings and waiting. I kind of like using this little controller to easily. There we go. That looks pretty good. So I can accept this. Let's maybe do a polish. Soften that up a little bit. All right. Let's see. We got. I got the rough out of the gun. I guess I can just let's take that guy and bring it in. For now, what we got? Let's go. Merge visible. I'm going to decimate this, bring it down just a bit so I can move it around easily.
Alright, so he's got this really sweet... I think I want to finalize his backpack. He's got this really sweet hose that's connecting from the pack that I'm going to have to connect to the gun. So let me get that rolling here. Just want to use the good old fashioned not circle. Let's go cylinder. Insert multi edges. If you ever want to do a perfect edge loop in the middle between two, you can go into multi edges and change the specific resolution option. Turn that on and set this thing to one. Now we can dump that in there. And then let's just do Q mesh, poly loop. All right, so then, oh, maybe just bring that up a tiny bit. Cool. 
So like he's got these uh he's got these little inflated sort of like ghost bubbles when he sucks up ghosts. They sort of like <laughs> fill up space in the tube. We could let's go send this thing to home. We could go into say the let's go project primitive. So this thing, we can actually go in here and have this thing travel up and down. So I'm going to pose that in there in a second. Eventually, I'm going to go in here and turn on the bend curve in the proper axis. Go with Y. So now we can start taking this thing. What do I got left? Let's give this guy some color, huh? I think it's time. This has actually got some pretty good flesh tones in there. So I'm going to make a quick color palette. Let's go color, fill object with the uh, white here. So if you have spotlight images, if you've got the spotlight wheel on, we can actually color pick from the image. Let's go brush standard and just do some RGB. Oops.
what do we got? So I'm going to just quick go into polypainting. So for me, I'm going to go into Z plugin and fill these guys with skin shade for now. Subtool master fill material. Oh, let's do color and material. So fill everything with white and the skin shade. Oh wait, except for this guy. And that of course. Maybe do some light color spray with less color. Turn on a little alpha for this. Get some dots going. Okay, far. I'm going to go back to spray instead of color spray. Doing the color stroke is usually actually pretty nice if you just want to add some tiny little flesh tones in there but overall the spray is a little bit better it's less hue selection from the entire wheel and more just saturation basically so you get little high tones and darker tones and now let's see maybe do a little
Maybe I'll go grab my materials. Make that just a tiny bit more specular. that much specular. Uh, yep, Alex. Do you find it more fun to create stylized characters now? Yeah, uh, honestly, it's been a really nice change of pace. Um, I feel like I bounce around a lot between different, like, sort of styles and things. But lately, it's it's this kind of stuff has been fun. I've been wanting to use ZBrush mashups as an excuse to just spend more time doing this kind of stuff. It's definitely been very freeing. It's uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Do you uh? You have any preference? Like, do you do you get hung up in one particular area? I, for me, I do end up feeling. I feel like I get better by changing it up a lot, um, instead of just sticking to one thing. Let's see, CG textures is what I want. Ah, you know what? Maybe we can just do a little old noise plugin. Let's see what we got in here. Not hex tile. I think I wanted uh, hound's tooth. Yeah, there we go.
Okay, so I'm going to save this. Okay, now before I apply this thing, he's got some sort of like a grayish underlay, so I'm going to maybe take that get that base gray and fill it. Now let's go in here, edit, we'll make this like a dark. I don't know if I like those variations. That's just too crazy. <laughs> I don't know if I like that one. Oh, I wonder if I could do like a. Let's see, let's go noise alpha. I'm gonna try and do an alpha image, but. Oh, there we go. That's the one. Maybe. We'll see. I don't want to fiddle with that too long. Fifty-five. Copy those. Paste.
All right. Well, I guess I just couldn't do it today, man. I I had all these big plans. I feel like I always do. That's how it goes, man. That's what happens. You noodle with the gun for an hour. I mean, it's starting to get there. It's getting close, right? I just need to... All the little final quick details and things, I gotta finalize all that. But for the most part, it's really just the painting, and then I think I just want to get into the pose, which I know those of you that are still tuning in, what do you think about... I kind of like an action pose like this. I want to I want to get into doing this maybe the next stream. I could probably just do the colors and stuff on my own for now and then maybe just do the final posing and all that stuff. I think this one looks pretty good. I'm I'm pretty much partial to that I think at this point. Oh, and there you go. Any final quick questions? It's already 4. My 2 hours are up unfortunately, but Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Oh, here we go. So I forgot to show you this. So I got this wheel. Any quick uh, ideas anybody wants to throw in here? I've got this thing pretty much ready to go. I'll probably have to add some more slots. Um, but eventually this will be able to. Let's see what we got for the next uh, the next ZBrush mashup. I've got, I've got Care Bears in here. I've got Space Marine, Xenomorph, Sub-Zero. Somebody already threw in Super Mario, which maybe I'll omit that one for the next one. But... Somebody threw in Fortnite, which I think Fortnite would be really fun. Yeah, R.I.P. Z, right? Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, let me know if you guys have any suggestions. Throw it in there. I'll leave the chat running. And uh, otherwise, I think the next stream I come back to, I want to focus on maybe the next. I might split these up, do a ZBrush mashup later, but then do a ZBrush stream only on 2018 features. So doing all new stuff. And. This is, I think, the third one, and honestly, I just, I think I just, I just want to, I spend so much time talking and noodling, and, which is great, I like to answer questions and do all of that, but I, I also need to get better about just doing this stuff on the fly, and not noodling, which, you guys checked me on the, uh, on the gun I was just fiddling with that thing for way too long but hopefully you guys got some stuff out of this and it's almost there it's almost there once I pose it I'll be able to throw this thing in Keyshot get some nice renders or maybe I'll just do ZBrush renders with light caps and things like that um, we'll see you know it depends on the mood but uh, thanks everybody for tuning in I should cut it off at this point and I will see you next time uh, if you guys throw, throw in your suggestions before I go if you guys would just all new stuff, ZBrush 2018, um, or I could do new stuff with ZBrush mashups and probably pull from this uh, list that we got here. I think we could get some really cool stuff going. So, Origami Ghost, I dig it. Origami Ghost. Yeah, I actually had, by the way, I had uh, a reference up. I wanted to get to like a, a Yoshi Ghost or a Yoshi Origami. Which I kind of like the ghost idea better. That's a, like a little bit more infused. Like do a comment, like do a giant one that he's sucking up. That'd be sweet. Anyways, good deal. Thank you all again. Much appreciated. Hope you guys got some good stuff out of this, and I'll see you all next time.